Hello, beautiful world. This is Faris Al Hajri, PhD. I am here in my uh, simple house in Adeba in uh, Oman. Uh, we're excited that uh, we are walking to places so between Oman and United States where we allocate our office, Hakwa Wellness in Virginia, Blacksburg for the reason to achieve our vision. So with the discovery as an Omani product and uh, the hakopathy that we found in the United States and being an Omani product, but uh, Oman means from Oman, uh, Gulf and Arab country and as uh, depending on the US strategy. So the partnership as a US strategy and Omani product to create what we believe is to go with our vision that uh, step by step we try to achieve one step one milestone achievement so trying our best this topic actually we cover about the fifth industrial revolution why we we assume or we are certain by using the brainstorming and i remember there was a course that i have taken before a long time about brainstorming Brainstorming is about, there's the difference between prediction and brainstorming. Nobody can predict what can happen in the future. You can assume, but by using brainstorming, through brainstorming, when you look at the events and put them together and so on, and you try to compile them together, events, series of events, then from there you may realize that, aha, uh -huh, it's aha moment. Aha moment means something's gonna happen, something's gonna, the, is, you know, so what we realize that the, of course, going back to the history, that the Industrial Revolution, the first Industrial Revolution started in the beginning of the 19th century. Yeah, uh, end of the 18th century, something like that. And it started in the United Kingdom, then followed by the United States. So it started, the first Industrial Revolution was shifting from, or, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, the life well, I mean, in the villages to the cities. So uh, people started to shift, to shift from, uh, from agriculture and so on and moving into cities to live a better life, to seek a, uh, for better job and so on. So that's the first industrial revolution and the uh, invention of machines and so on. Then followed by other series of industrial revolution, the second and the third and the f now we're in the fourth industrial revolution that uh, based on the nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, and evolution of information, internet, uh, and all these uh, facilities made the Industrial Revolution the fourth Industrial Revolution. Now, we believe that the fifth Industrial Revolution is yet to happen, is now happening, it started to happen. And this fifth Industrial Revolution, revolution comes with a series of uh, that will follow, will supersede immediately within this uh, in fifth um, industrial revolution. I don't know it to be called the six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but we believe that five industrial revolutions are about to occur within this, what we consider the entire fifth industrial revolution. How? The first one, which is the gigantic revolution, the fifth gigantic revolution is the wellness industry. The health, the healthcare system is gonna change dramatically. And when we say healthcare system is, Today, every human being is becoming more to understand how does the body function? How does his body or her body function? What does it need to maintain the efficacy? What are the, uh, the elements that play the big role to maintain a good lifestyle? So it's just about changing the lifestyle, taking a new lifestyle change to understand what your body is craving for. Why? When you ask any person who has a series of chronic ailments, there are people who have a two or three or five, 10, 15. I've met people, I'm communicating with a lot of uh, patients or people who are suffering, followers who are suffering like series of 15 diseases, chronic. So that to me is an aha moment that when I say, okay, did you start, did these, all these 15 chronic ailments came together as a shower? No. It started what? It started with an allergy, allergic reaction. Then the allergic reaction brought what? It is followed by a being diagnosed with a specific ailment, disease. And because of not finding the root cause and trying to solve 
through the through uh, by not finding the root cause by trying through only the the symptom trying to solve the symptom then what happened you have two issues that because you do not solve the root cause then that disease may come again and become strong again and we may you know become more chronic or more serious this is what's happening number two based on the what you are taking to rely your body to get rid of that infection, pathogens, microorganisms, foreign bodies that enter your body, that so-called the disease-causing pathogen, then when you try to solve through a, a specific pill or medication drug, then what's happening is that that drug may somewhere somehow leave harm detrimental side effect. And that would start with the, with the allergies and so on and the, some side effect. But in the long run, then you becoming more, uh, so you compromise your immune system instead of it to protect you, your liver to swallow all the, the, the foreign bodies, the toxins and so on, your white blood cells to swallow, to grab the uh, pathogens, microorganisms, uh, viruses, then you, you become like a so-called a robot. So you have unintentionally turn your body into a robot, that means you become relying on the drugs instead of relying on your own capability. So when you look carefully with the osteopathic medicine that's now recognized in the United States in 50 states. Osteopathy, when you look carefully with the tenets of osteopathy, that your body as a whole has a relationship, interrelationship, you know, between the body, mind and soul. It has an interparty related to each other, you know, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. Then, when you realize with the uh, second tenet of osteopathy is that your body, the human body has its own innate ability to self-healing, self-protection, and self-maintenance. So what's happened here? If your body has all these capabilities, so we've realized that a aquapathy has been the missing part to substantiate the efficacy of the system. The system itself is the body. How does it function? You know, how it's been, a, how it, it was created, how it was completed in the form during the fetal growth development, then when the person is, grow, is, a, is born, then that's disconnected. So what are the essential fuels? So when you take a careful, you look careful that a human being is not a machine. You are turning yourself like a robot. So when you start to treat yourself through the, because oh, human has the ability to invent, to discover, to uh, manufacture, and so on. So science has reached a tremendous exponential growth of science. Now, the reason here, human has been able to invent and uh, whatever, explore and discover and all these things. But what is related to nature, everything that's been created, nature itself, it goes itself by itself, you cannot touch it. The moment you touch it, you try to manipulate it, then it gets, it, 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 the system collapses. Whether it's a nature or anything or any creature, any creature. So a human being is created. You are created. You are not fabricated. So the moment you turn yourself to depend on these foreign dependency, you are turning yourself unintentionally like into a robot, artificial intelligence, or like a vehicle, to take an example, or a machine. Because a machine is a human fabricated, human made. So the maintenance will rely on the manufacturer that, that invented that machine and the fuels to keep that machine, which is called the machine, is the system to function accurately. We rely on also on abiding the manufacturer's recommendation of the fuels. Now, with a human being, you are not a machine. You are not a uh, you are not manufactured, you are not uh, designed, you are being created. So there is a completely difference. When you are created, look carefully how you were formed and how did the completion of your fetal development taken place. There's not any, any manufacturer that to intervene, human manufacturer, more than just human to understand how that system grows and gets system. The system is the body, the human body, that's you before you were born. So how that fetal development has taken place and the moment you came to life, you were disconnected from these uh, fuels. So based on the tender osteopathy, the body has its own innate, it's, it, uh, it possesses its innate ability to self-healing, self-maintenance, self-regulation. So what happened? 
what is the missing part? The missing part is the hypopathy. The fuels to maintain, these um, fuels have to maintain complying with the ecological, the universal cosmogenic laws of the nature. That means these fuels are purely natural. They are not fabricated and they cannot be fabricated, they cannot be invented, they cannot be manipulated. And they are specifically the fields, we call them the fields, F-E-E-L, small s. So, fields. So, fields are the four essential elements of life. Namely, they come from aqua, water. Specifically, exclusively, water, oxygen, hydrogen, energy. These are the exclusive natural fuels that make your body to function accurately. So the moment your body is depleted with these fuels, one of these fuels, or most of these fuels, with a, below the minimum range, then that's where the system starts to collapse, cannot defend itself. Your immune system can no longer protect you against pathogens, viruses, including the COVID, the SARS COVID, COVID 2, which is COVID 19, because the COVID 19 uh, pandemic and uh, so on. So, uh, your body has innate ability, but you need to understand your body as a system. It has to be infiltrated, it has to be injected, maintain the discipline of the nature that the way your body deserves to function, deserves what it needs. What are those fuels and what range of these fuels, natural fuels specifically, exclusively that we mentioned to maintain your efficacy in your own physical, emotional, mental and spiritual health, which is a holistic health. Right. So this we believe that this is a call to pharmaceutical industries. Yes. There could be a big boom to the business but, uh, of the, because of the uh, vaccination and so on. But what will happen with the result later on, the side effect of the vaccine? Myself, for 14 years, myself and my family, we completely refused to take any drug and we are completely asymptomatic and we do our full medical checkup. Number one. Number two, we completely refused to take any vaccination. That's our personal decision because I have the solution. Hacopathy that changed my life to discover how the human body fun it function accurately, specifically, what at it relied to make the system to maintain the efficacy based on the tenet of osteopathy. So simple. So when we what we believe is that since osteopathic medicine in the United States is completely supported in all 50 states, number number one. Number two I am so engaged with the United States because it's a country of freedom, freedom of information. Whatever is good is being provided and whatever is bad is being provided. I couldn't believe whenever every time I opened the PubMed, PubMed, which is, a, under the, is, a, is owned by the United States federal you know, so agent, so it's, it's a government agent. There is no bias. They provide all the information. When you look at the side effect of drugs, that causing diseases and ailments and chronic, you'll be shocked. But these are free of information provided. So what's happening here? When you look at the Medline, which is under the, which is part of the NIH and also PubMed, NIH, which is the National Institute of Health, which is also, um, which is the entire uh, federal agent, you know, under the United States uh, Health Department. So we realize that the freedom of information make people to take a aha moment and to say, oh, is this me? So what's the next? Come on. The other one is this pandemic has differentiated between the healthy people, healthy subject and unhealthy subject. Now any person who is asymptomatic has nothing to fear with so-called pandemic or the viruses. But what is the lockdown? Is that oh you need, if you if don't need the protection, you need to protect others. But what's happening? You need to take the vaccination. Myself, I believe the vaccination could be do harm more than it could do good because this vaccination has been only tested eff efficacy. It's efficacy just only for three months. What will happen after the three months? What will happen after injecting with after six months, after the 10 months? Some rumors, some news about the blood clot. Uh, Europe has completely suspended the Astra, the Astra uh, Zeneca. Uh, United Kingdom also has stopped. Uh, Ireland, uh, Australia has announced uh, the uh, suspending till further uh, research to find whether it's directly linked with the blood clot. So why should I become a victim? 
Why should it become victimized? Why should I be forced to take the vaccination? I know government want the best for the best for the people, but it's about the people also to understand that. Why do we have to hurry up and then my body once injected with something can harm me? How can I get rid of this chemical in the long run? No, that's one issue. So when I came to find when people that have this series of co complications, when I asked them, they say it started with one complication, but they, it's going to be solved. It went for the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and tenth and so on. So people carrying this chronic ailment. So we came to realize that it's a, it's a plea. We this is a plea. This is uh, we plea the uh, pharmaceutical industry. You've been investing a lot into the drug industry. This is the time to take a diversion to understand that this revolution is not coming from me. It's not coming from somebody else. It's coming in the globally. It's the people's choice. Nobody will come and force people to be vaccinated. No government can do that. No even about the drugs. You have to take the drugs because you are sick. You have to be forced like what we used to do. I used to do to my son. I force him to take medication. I say no, he, because the doctor say you have to take your antibiotic. The doctor is doing great. He's doing his job. But is that the antibiotic that he's been taking? So we force him. It's like, it's like we're going to kill him because we force him. We, we put our mouth to his, uh, I mean, our hands to the mouth to, to force him and hold his legs, hold his uh, hands, force him to take the antibiotic because this child doesn't want antibiotic and we are trying to force the child. That, for me, it was like a crime I was conducting. You know, so today, 14 years, I celebrate without taking medication, me and my family, without taking the, the, the vaccination. I'm not trying to make this a campaign to others. Everybody's free. You want to take your vaccination, go and take. But for me, it's my freedom to choose that I don't want to take that for the reason which I mentioned. So, but we, it's a plea. We plead the pharmaceutical industry that the drug industry, the money you're putting, that this industry it will very, very soon, like a storm, will start to collapse in an exponential collapse. We do not predict, we use a brainstorm. So what we need here, we, we, we invite them to say, look, you need to invest in so-called, you see, your intention is in the healthcare system. That is the intention, to provide to, uh, to proper healthcare. So what could happen is that the world understand the side effect of the drugs. What will happen? What will happen? So, you know, what about the doctors? You can work and to diagnose, but when it comes to treatment, a human being doesn't need to be treated where he need to be revitalized because based on the tenet of osteopathy, he just, the body, just let the body to do its own function. Just help the body to once you revitalize it, the immune system, it will do the function perfect much better than anything. The, uh, the liver, the white blood cells and everything in our body has all that efficacy. So the moment you understand the aha moment, that's the moment where you see it's an evolution, freedom of information, shared information. This is one of the major industrial fifth industrial revolution is yet to help to occur. Is already going it's very very soon to happen in a very powerful way. Not coming from me, not coming. It's just coming by itself, like any other industrial revolutions. The other one that will follow the series of other, I don't know if these will be called the sixth or seventh or eighth or ninth and turn, but they, I believe these are five industrial revolutions that will be under the um, giant, uh, gigantic industrial revolution, fifth industrial revolution, gigantic because it will have a series, series, series that means the health or the wellness industry is the fifth uh, industrial revolution, followed immediately, simultaneously by what? The youth. The youth, the youth are about to take over everywhere. They are the leaders already. They are the one who take over big job in politics. You know all these government, uh, uh, you know uh, premises. The high, top jobs will be taken by the youth. And when you talk about the youth, means the young generations between 20, 25 to 40, or probably 50, but mostly 40. But up to 50. Those are considered the young generation, highly productive, highly uh, innovative and so on. So those are the driving force to create that, to be part of this huge mega change that's about to start to, to happen in the world. It's not happening for me, but it's happening itself by itself. It's by the universal itself. Universe conduct does things by itself. So it's happening already. So the youth will take over highest position like CEOs, presidents, uh, uh, secretaries, uh, you know, top jobs, uh, scientists, uh, and so on. I mean, they're going to be 
uh, in the, those fields uh, very soon. So we need to accept that those who are above 50, you need to understand that the youth are the driving force of every, this major, a, a major change that's never happened in the history of humankind. This is a very important. The following one of the industrial revolution is the wealth. Wealth, when you talk about wealth, it's not about money. Money doesn't make anything. Money, yes, everybody wants to be rich. We talk, we're not talking about fortune. So not every rich is wealthy, but every wealthy is rich. And when we talk about being wealthy, is to possess all the five from the most to the least. So they're all, we, we, we coin them, these wealthy uh, factors, the five factors of wealth. Number one, the power of faith. Power of faith means understanding the laws of the universe, nature, laws of nature. Abide it and understanding your relationship, personal relationship with, with the people around you, with the community, with the government, with the rules and regulations, with the, with the nature, with the, the entire world to create the so-called a better world. So you're becoming irrevocably part of that initiative. So that's the power of faith, the driving force being honest, being good, and being straight in your life because that's the key for your true success great now number two the second factor is the 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 pems health physical emotional mental and spiritual the entire holistic health that you already is possible to live a complete comprehensive ultimate healthy lifestyle it's possible number three is happiness you can buy happiness by money or by power that you have but happiness comes within the satisfaction of following with the preceded one Followed by that is the skill and knowledge. How you use the skill and knowledge to innovate, to improve, to, to create a, what you call a, a network of collaboration and uh, coming together with a common pr principle, common goals that have mutual interest to both parties, whether a group of people, whether two people, two people or a group of people or two organizations, two companies, establishments or two countries or two uh, continents and so on with the entire world. The more the world collaborate, in a way that by any of these options, the more they find there are common goals that to be bringing them together for a better cause, for a better achievement. achievement. This is very important. The following revolution is the revolution of poverty, Man, I mean uh, financial. Uh, poverty, we believe, will be diminished gradually and tremendously for the reason because innovation and so on and for freedom of information and uh, you see giant uh, companies are gonna, they're trying to reach every single place like Microsoft, uh, Google, with all these services. So every person today becoming more aware to understand that I can be productive once I maintain my health and I maintain to reach, so the world will become more united. So means richness to the world is going to be rich. So we, but the world is so be rich beyond any person could expect. We never explore, explore even except a tiny part of the richness of the world. The world is super, super, super rich that it can easily cover the 7.8 billion population, 10 times even, and everybody living the least life that is managed with all the necessities of life for your living, for your food, for your utilities, for your bills, I mean, and everything, and your luxurious lifestyle. Believe me or not? Okay, right, this is the, the very important point. Then followed by, by um, I didn't take a note, but I need to remember all the five. They are all five. And uh, yes, flying cars, machineries, that means a technological advance in the uh, flying industry. Flying industry, we start to experience the flying cars that you have your personal car that you from here you can easily just fly like a missile you reach from as far as a 5,000 mile in just less than two hours and you just have a lunch so you are in the United States you go to Hawaii and you just have a you, go, you have a breakfast in the United States like in New York and you get to lunch in Hawaii and you get a dinner in Japan I mean is going to be so flying cars going to be exponentially changing the technology in terms of flying and also safety that you have within yourself as you do your home and that you just fly like that and there'll be i mean that we believe based on the brainstorming that i'm trying to go through that i see a lot of changes exponential change in the world for a better world so let's collaborate let's not allow the pandemic which is coming series on series of pandemic. We are fighting a soldier that we don't know. 
Yeah, the next one is, I believe, now just come pop up to my mind, is about uh, peace. Peace will reign all over the world. Now, m most of the countries, they don't want to go into war. They understand that rich countries and poor countries, developing world and developed world, they all come together with a common sense. They all have mutual interests. You may see United States needs Africa because of the resources in Africa, but it needs also to be on a mutual interest. That means you take from the resource of Africa, but also you keep the African people to be living in what they deserve for the wealth they have on their natural resources and so on with the, uh, the entire world like that. So you will never find two people or two group of people or two organizations or two different type of societies or two countries or two continents when they come together there will always be mutual interest that will be on the service of both of them that will serve for the good serve good purpose to both both parts that's why we believe that war will be almost eradicated human will start to understand that i am seeing my my twin my twin my twin because who is watching this video you are my twin you are my twin because we are sharing three factors number one we came from the same family the source of creation the first family that's yours that's mine so we are family right whether you accept or not we came from there one family the first number two the <laughs> the, the all these organs the body composition I have one nose, you have one nose, I have two eyes, you have two eyes, I have two ears, you have two ears. I have one heart, you have one heart, I have two kidneys, you have two kidneys. Come on, I, what's going on? So what's going on? Am I fighting my, my twin brother, twin sister? What's going on? Something's going wrong with us. We do not understand. Our brain has been dehaquated. We need to understand that. We do not realize the aha moment. The aha moment comes when you start to haquit your brain. The way you take information, you perceive information, you store information, you take action. That is so important. So be careful about that. Understand. Do not neglect. Do not judge a book by the title. Just read the book carefully. Try to understand the book. And from there you can judge. It's very important. Very, very important. So we understand that we're entering a different world. Keep <laughs> supporting our initiative as everybody's doing work. Is doing a, many are doing amazing. And the world's going to be out of this turbulence. This pandemic is nothing. We are capable, we are strong, we are smart enough to face any pandemic, any viruses with the innate ability of our bodies. Carefully look on the osteopathic medicine and look on our holistic health, look on other that have taken so huge, the wellness industry, look, they've taken huge success and uh, progress. But one thing was missing, the fuels and understand how nature function, how creature they function without being touched without being disturbed just maintain respect understand and provide what is there you do not have to invent from nature it's there you just provide to maintain the efficacy the entire ecological